What's love got to do with it? The famous line from Tina Turner's song, and I think Martin Luther has something to share on it today as well. Good morning, happy Martin Luther King Day. My name is Father Frank Buckley. Delighted to be your host on this beautiful Monday morning here in Hollywood. Today is going to be a great day. If you're new to the program, welcome. It is a three-part series. We always begin with a little inspiration. This morning, we'll be using Martin Luther's King's sermon, Love Your Enemies. The second part of the uh, program is the contemplative practice, where we actually do a morning practice, 20 minutes of silent meditation with a little guided meditation to get us into it. In this morning practice, we give the first part of our morning to God and then allow the rest of the day to unfold as she will. And then the last uh, part of the program is our Jesuit examine where on Mondays we look over the uh, weekend and just notice where God came for alive for us in our ordinary everyday humdrum lives. So without further ado, let's get started with a little Martin Luther King sermon to celebrate this beautiful holiday, Martin Luther King Day. This homily uh, sermon he gave came out of a sermon he preached when the doctor had ordered him to stay in bed because he was ill and he got the doctor to just agree that he would just come out and preach and then go home and it became one of his really most stunning sermons talking about love your enemy not an easy thing to do but i think what he says is very helpful now there is a final reason i think that jesus says love your enemies. It is this, that love has within it a redemptive power. And there is a power there that eventually transforms individuals. That's why Jesus says, love your enemies. Because if you hate your enemies, you have no way to redeem and to transform your enemies. But if you love your enemies, you will discover that at the very root of love is the power of redemption. You just keep loving people and keep loving them, even though they're mistreating you. Here's the person who is a neighbor, and this person is doing something wrong to you and all of that. Just keep being friendly to that person. Keep loving them. Don't do anything to embarrass them. Just keep loving them and they can't stand it too long. Oh, they react in many ways in the beginning. They react with bitterness because they're mad because you love them like that. They react with guilt feelings and sometimes they'll hate you a little more at that transition period. But just keep loving them. And by the power of your love, they will break down under the load. That's love, you see. It is redemptive. And this is why Jesus says love. There's something about love that builds up and is creative. There is something about hate that tears down and is destructive. Love your enemies. Amen. Thank you, Martin Luther King, for getting us started with that very prophetic message about the transformative power of love and we can all do this. It definitely helps to come from that contemplative space rather than go through life 
with knee-jerk reactions. So let's get started on this Martin Luther King Day with our contemplative practice. I invite you to get comfortable. You can take your you can take your shoes off. I'm going to lower the lights while you get comfortable. One of the ways we flourish is to unplug from technology. So I've got the timer set for 20 minutes. Which allows you to not worry about the time. I will ring the bell to get us into the practice, do a little guided meditation, and then we will enjoy the miracle of meditation. So let's get started. I invite you to close your eyes or lower the eyes, whatever feels comfortable to you. And as always, we begin with the sound of the bell. Listen, listen, the sound of this bell returns us to our true home. As always, let's begin with diaphragmatic breathing, that is breathing deeply as possible into the lower belly, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Together as a community, inhale, open mouth, exhale bringing fresh oxygen to the brain and the body. Two more times, inhale and exhale. Last time, give it all you got, inhale and exhale. Continue to breathe on your own. Take the attention to the body. We start with the feet pressed on to the green earth, our mother. Thich Nhat Hanh says the miracle is not only that Jesus walked on water, but that he walked on the green earth. Just take a moment to feel the earth beneath you. Moving up the body, we arrive at the chair, providing support. These transformative words of Jesus to love our enemies are challenging. We cannot do it alone. We need a little support. Let's reflect on where we felt support recently in our life. Moving up the body, we arrive at the shoulders, the place where sometimes a little tension can reside. If we've been holding on to anything this weekend that needs to be surrendered, released, let go, just allow it to slide off the shoulders and let the earth receive it. Relax, restore, renew. Moving towards the front of the body, we arrive at the heart, the place the spiritual world touches the physical world, and we cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Nicky Myers, the 
teacher on recovery and the 12 steps. Her mantra is a grateful addict will not use. So cultivating this attitude of gratitude, let's focus on something for which we're grateful for today on Martin Luther King Day and just name it in one word. Gently take that word and place it towards the center of your heart. And as a community, let's breathe one time into that gratitude. Inhale. And exhale. And just notice what you feel. And finally, we arrive at the forehead, the area between the eyebrows, the seat of intuition, and we focus on an intention for today. St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits, would invite us again and again to ask God for what we deeply desire, being courageous enough to ask God for something great and beautiful on this day. And we'll seal that intention with an inhale and an exhale. Continue to breathe on your own. Listen to the external sounds. Engage your sacred word four or five times. Take the attention to the breath. Drop down and enjoy a little deep rest. Please continue.
Very, very gently bring your attention back to the room. If the eyes were closed, go ahead, open the eyes. Let's re-engage with the body. Circle the wrist a little, bring a little movement, reverse the train. And then we'll bring a little oxytocin, the love hormone into the body, transformative power of love. Rub the hands together. Let's heat things up a little. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. Place the hands next to the heart. Feel the touch, feel the warmth, feel the transformative power of love. Inhale, exhale, take it in. Inhale, raise the arms up. Little stretch to the left, center, right, healthy spine, healthy body. Look towards the heavens, little gentle back bend, little forward bend, pull the tummy in. Inhale, raise the arms up, more in stretch. Exhale, shake out anything that you've been holding on to. And what a perfect segue into our morning Jesuit examine. The body keeps the score. So we'll look over the last uh, weekend and very simply notice where God came alive for you. And we try to build a little community here, connect, 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 by just putting it in the comment box. If you're new, feel free to introduce yourself and let us know where you're from. And I'll just go over a little mini examine of where God came alive for me uh, this weekend. So let me begin by... Uh, Let's see, I did a, uh, I did a, a little core power 20 minute hot yoga class last night that was online. And by the end, my tongue was literally hanging out, but it just, I felt so much better. And it just reminded me how great exercise and yoga is for the body. It was really, really great. I know we all miss the gyms and the yoga studios and, studios and all, but I think now's the time just we do whatever we can to uh, keep keep the body healthy. And exercise is one way of doing it. It was really a great little class. Um, second is, uh, let's see, 
one of my favorite, I think you guys have figured this out. One of my favorite things in life is reading. I was reading a little Jungian book on clinical practice and dreams. And there's something about a physical book. I'm not talking about Audible, although I do love Audible, but a physical book, just completing a book. Like I came to the end and it was just, it was a, it was a clear, concise book. And I uh, really enjoyed it. What I took out of it was this great uh, quote from Aristotle that the best interpreter of dreams are the people who can observe resemblances in dreams. So that was really great. And then last, um, the psychologist and the Jesuit of me is always interested in transformation. I really wanted to bring you guys something for Martin Luther King today. And I almost accidentally stumble, stumbled on his sermon about love your enemies. Uh, not easy. I never really get it. Forget 70 times seven. How about just once trying to forgive? It's really challenging. But I think King, again, is only he can do. He hit it out of the park that the transformative power of love. When we get this God who is a God of love, everything, even our enemies, begin to shift. What more could we ask for on this beautiful holiday? Have a beautiful Martin Luther King Day. See you tomorrow. God bless you.